In my previous Hackintosh video, I said I would come back to talk about the GPU decisions that I had to make, specifically choosing between the GTX 1080 Ti and this right here, the RX 480. Which one is best for my particular Hackintosh? We're gonna talk about that right now. I'm gonna run some benchmarks and compare the two, and what you find might surprise you. Let's check it out. Okay, so let's do some benchmarks. The first benchmark we're gonna run is from Luxmark, and this specifically is great for measuring OpenCL performance. Now, there is a perceived notion that NVIDIA GPUs are terrible at OpenCL, but that's not necessarily true. You could see there, 22,541, that is the score for the GTX 1080 Ti. Now, granted, this is a $700 card, so it should perform well, uh, but notice that the RX 480's performance is around 14,140, so, yeah, doesn't do as good, which isn't surprising given the price discrepancy. But what I really wanted to point out is that NVIDIA GPUs aren't terrible necessarily at OpenCL tasks. As you can see there, it beats the RX 480 in all three tests. Uh, but it really just depends on how the app is optimized for the card in question. Now we're gonna run the Bruce X test. This is a 5K Final Cut Pro test. Um, that is fairly popular among Final Cut Pro enthusiasts. I don't think it's like the best or the be all end all test to, to gauge Final Cut performance, but I think it gives us a nice ballpark figure. So you can see there the GTX 1080 Ti, 22.3 seconds. Let's run the same test with the RX 480, which is uh, from Sapphire here. And what you're gonna observe is that the RX 480 actually beats out the GTX 1080 Ti in the Bruce X test. Now, it's not by a wide margin, but it does beat it nonetheless. You can see 15 seconds or so there. So here is the difference between those two. Here's the RX 480. Obviously shorter is better. So you can see that the RX 480 does outperform the GTX 1080 Ti in this particular test. Now let's run another test and see how it fares. This time we're gonna run a single pass test using compressor. Now I am exporting a 4K timeline here at 50,000 kilobits per second. And like I said, I'm using compressor and the video itself is about five minutes and 32 seconds. It's a 4K video shot at 150 megabits per second using a Panasonic GH5. So as you can see, this is the NVIDIA card and it is taking a while. So it's 19 minutes to export there. Let's try the same test with the RX 480 and see how it fares. Okay, so same exact timeline, same exact circumstances. The only difference is that we're using the RX 480 instead of the GTX 1080 Ti in this test. And you can already see that the RX 480 is killing it. It is is exporting it faster than real time. In fact, it's going to export faster than it would be if we just actually played the video from start to finish. So you can see there, five minutes and five seconds. Now let's try a multi-pass test, and we're going to compare the GTX 1080 Ti and the RX 480 in a multi-pass test. These traditionally take much longer than a single-pass test. And you can see that the GTX 1080 Ti, we're already at 45 minutes, folks. We're already at almost an hour. We're past an hour. And you can see an hour, seven minutes, and 40 some odd seconds. Yeah, that is forever. I mean, obviously no one's gonna to wanna to export a five minute video and have it take over an hour. Now, all that said, I rarely use multi-pass and I would rarely recommend anyone use multi-pass, especially for YouTube videos. Uh, it just isn't necessary these days. The quality that you get from single pass is more than adequate in my opinion. All right, so we're at about 10 minutes and 30, 40, 41 seconds, 10 minutes and 41 seconds, way faster with the RX 480 exporting multi-pass. So whether it's single pass or multi-pass, it doesn't really matter. The RX 480 is much quicker when compared to the GTX 1080 Ti. Just look at that graph there and you can see for yourself how much faster the AMD RX 480 is. Now, why is this? If the RX 480 is not as good as the GTX 1080 Ti in Luxmark test with OpenCL, why is it so much faster? Well, here's what I think. As I alluded to at the outset, if an application is designed with a particular piece of hardware in mind, like the Final Cut Pro app is designed with AMD cards in mind, even though the GTX 1080 Ti is generally better in overall OpenCL performance, Final Cut Pro wasn't optimized to run on NVIDIA hardware like it is the AMD hardware. And 
NVIDIA specializes more so in CUDA than it does in OpenCL. They put more of their resources into CUDA development than they would OpenCL. Now that's not to say that the GTX 1080 Ti is not a good choice for Hackintoshes because it may be depending on how you use it. Are you using Adobe apps? Then this is the card for you. Are you dual booting Windows and playing a lot of games? Then this is the card for you. In fact, the RX 480 actually has some problems with Final Cut Pro 10 that I've noticed that I discuss a little bit more in depth in the posts over at 9to5Mac. So read that if you want more details on why you may not even want to pick up an RX 480 because there are some caveats to doing so. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Which one would you choose for your Hackintosh? Sound off down below. Also leave me a thumbs up if you appreciated this video. I'll be back next week with another Hackintosh related video, so make sure you subscribe so that you're alerted. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.